The development of the head, face and the neck starts around the fourth week of the fetus from specialized structures known as the cranial neural crest cells. These cranial neural crest cells contribute to the majority of the structures of the head, face and neck. To understand their origin story, let's go back, way back to the stage of the ovum. We will trace it to the stages of the embryo, to the stage of the morula, to the stage of the blastocyst, wherein it attaches to the uterine wall. At the second week, the embryo blast, which is a blastocyst, shows the hypoblast and the epiblast. Up to the third week, the epiblast shows a streak of cells which differentiates and migrates to form the three germ cell layers that is the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm. In the fourth week, the ectoderm forms the notochord. A thickening occurs above the notochord which is the neural plate. The edges of which elevate to form the neural fold and finally the neural tube. The cells of the neural tube are the neural crest cells which span along the entire length of the fetus cranial caudally and in the cranial region are known as the cranial neural crest cells. The cranial neural crest cells they migrate from the back to the front and contribute to the structures of the head and neck like the bones, cartilage and nerves. Any abnormality in the migration of these cranial neural crest cells leads to the abnormal phases. So with this background, we will dwell in the realm of the embryology of the nose and the paranasal sinuses and try to simplify it. Let's begin. Welcome to the ENT classroom, a one stop for simplified ENT and head and neck surgery. Facial development starts by the 4th week and is finished by the 8th week. Phase develops from the 5 facial swelling that is the unpaired frontonasal process and the paired maxillary and the mandibular processes. Charting this whole thing as a schematic diagram, the frontonasal process is white, maxillary process is pink, mandibular process is green. All these processes develop around the stomodium or the primitive mouth. The frontonasal process is the downward proliferation of the ectoderm of the forebrain. The maxillary and the mandibular processes are derivatives of the first pharyngeal arch. Hence, all these structures are derived from the ectoderm or the cranial neural crest cells. At the fifth week of development, pairs of ectodermal thickenings develops on the frontonasal process called as the nasal placode. A placode is a local thickening in the embryonic ectoderm that develops into a sensory organ or ganglion. Here, the nasal placode forms the olfactory ganglion. During the sixth week of development, the ectoderm of the center of these placodes invaginate to form the nasal pits. The raised rim of these pits form the lateral and the median nasal processes which increase in size and grows medially, causing the median nasal process to fuse and form the intermaxillary region, which forms the nasal prominence, the central bridge of the nose and the central portion of the lip called the philtrum. This also causes the maxillary process to grow medially fusing first with the lateral nasal process and then with the medial nasal process, the separating the nasal processes from the stomodium. This line of fusion between the processes that is the medial nasal process, the lateral nasal process and the maxillary process is the nasooptic groove or the nasolacrimal groove, which later invaginates into the underlying nasal chyme to form the nasolacrimal duct, cannulation of which continues throughout the pregnancy and is finished just after birth. This is the picture in the embryo showing the frontonasal process, the median nasal process, the lateral nasal processes, the stomodium, the maxillary and the mandibular processes which are derived from the first pharyngeal arch and the line of fusion which is the nasooptic groove or the nasolacrimal groove. During the sixth week of development, the nasal pit deepens and forms a single cavity behind the intermaxillary region which is separated from the stomodium by the oronasal membrane. During the seventh week, the oronasal membrane ruptures to form coena connecting the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. Primary palate is formed from the intermaxillary region which also grows backwards to form the nasal septum. The lateral nasal process forms the ala and grows backwards to form the lateral nasal wall which shows multiple anterior posterior elevations or ridges called the turbinals which later form the turbinates or concave. Starting from below up in the lateral nasal wall, these are 
वन मैक्सिमो टर्मिनल एंड फाइव इथमो टर्मिनल स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम वन टू फाइव द मैक्सिमो टर्मिनल फॉर्म द इंफीरियर टर्मिनेट लेटर द फर्स्ट इथमो टर्मिनल डिसअपियर्स इट्स रेमिनेंट्स आर द नेजो टर्मिनल विच फॉर्म द अदर नेजा एंड द एंसिनेट द सेकेंड इथमो टर्मिनल फॉर्म द मिडिल टर्मिनेट the third ethmo turbinal forms the superior turbinate the fourth and the fifth ethmo turbinates ethmo turbinals combine to form the supreme turbinate which is a very rare condition furrows done up between the turbinates to form meatus below the inferior turbinate is the opening of the inferior meatus showing the opening of the nasolacrimal duct between the inferior turbinate and the middle turbinate is the middle meatus showing the opening of the anterior group of cells that is the anterior ethmoid maxillary and the frontal sinus between the superior turbinate and the middle turbinate is the is a superior meatus showing the opening of the posterior ethmoids and the sphenoids between the superior turbinates and the supreme turbinates is the supreme meata which rarely shows the opening of the posterior ethmoids and the sphenoids in some patients the secondary palate is also formed at the same time from the palatine shells which are the medial extensions of the maxillary processes which grows downwards first and then upwards into the horizontal position to form the secondary palate the secondary palate then fuses with the primary palate anteriorly and superiorly with the bony nasal septum both of which are formed from the intermaxillary region site of fusion of the primary and the secondary palate is the incisive foramen just to revise what we have learned so far broadly during the fourth week the embryo is characterized by five facial swellings the unpaired frontonasal process and the paired maxillary and the mandibular processes all derived from the cranial neural crest cells during the fifth week the nasal placoid which formed the olfactory system is formed and the lens placoid is also formed which will become the lens of the eye the maxillary and the mandibular processes are also formed which will form the upper and the lower jaw respectively during the sixth week the two mandibular processes fuse to form the lower jaw the outline of the mouth is also visible during this period in the 7th week the maxillary process forms the border of the upper lip majority of the maxillary and the mandibular prominences forms the cheek and the corner of the mouth the philtrum of the upper lip is created at the same time from the intermaxillary region so to revise what forms what the frontal nasal process forms the forehead the bridge of the nose median and lateral prominences the maxillary process forms the cheek the lateral portion of upper lip the median nasal process forms the philtrum of upper lip crest and tip of nose and the also the septum the lateral nasal process forms the ala of the nose and lateral nasal wall the mandibular process forms the lower lip and the jaw at birth the volume of the cranial vault is 7 times the volume of the facial skeleton this ratio steadily decreases during infancy and childhood due to the development of the four pairs of paranasal sinuses and teeth to a ratio of 2 to 1 in the adult The sinuses develop from the invagination of the nasal cavity into the surrounding bones. The maxillary and the ethmoid sinuses develop in utero during the third and the fifth fetal months, respectively. The maxillary sinus is in the form of an elongated sac in the neonate. With the eruption of the deciduous teeth, it enlarges. The ethmoidal sinuses are small before the age of two years, then grow rapidly till six to eight years, but do not complete the growth until puberty. Around the age of two, the most anterior ethmoidal cells grow into the frontal bone to form the frontal sinus. Similarly, between the ages of two and five years, the most posterior ethmoidal cells grow into the sphenoid bone to form the sphenoid sinus. Growth of the paranasal sinuses not only changes the shape and size of the face in childhood, but also adds resonance to the voice in the adults. To summarize the growth and development of paranasal sinuses. the maxillary and the ethmoid sinuses are both present at birth the maxillary sinus rapidly grows from birth to 3 years adult size is reached by 15 years radiologically it is first visible by 4 to 5 months after birth the ethmoid sinus which is adult size by 12 years and radiologically first visible by 1 year both frontal and sphenoid sinuses are absent at birth The frontal sinus invades frontal bone at the age of four years, and size increases till teens. First radiological evidence is seen by six years. The sphenoid sinus reaches cella tarsica by the age of seven years, dorsum cellae by late teens, and basal sphenoid by adult age. 
Adult size is reached by 15 years. Radiologically first visible by 4 years. So that's it from my side guys. Hope you all liked it. Do tell me about it in the comment section below. Fire away any suggestions. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to ENT Companion. Thank you for watching.